Tennessee is is legit. I think I think everybody knows that now. Uh, yeah. I don't know that that's a question. Um, you know, I put them in the playoff, and, and I might have I might have been a little too conservative. <laughs> I've been a little too conservative. They this is an SEC championship contender. Uh, yeah. This is this is a top four playoff seed contender, and if they're not, they might very well be the five or six seed, uh, depending how it shakes out. And again, we still got to see them play play Georgia, uh, even with Georgia's struggles. I think we'll learn a lot more about Tennessee coming up. They still got to play Alabama, um, but man, Tennessee, yeah. And and you know, I said that after their bowl game last year against Iowa, with, when Nico started, Nico's the real deal. Uh, you know, yeah. You love to scoff at Iowa, but you know they've got a great defense. And Nico looked like a seasoned veteran against them in his first start in that bowl game. Um, and, and going to Oklahoma, that's a tough place to go. His first road game and and handled it tremendously. Yeah, I I'll add this to in, in kind of my thoughts on Tennessee. I'm not going to overreact to one game and say Tennessee's winning the SEC or Tennessee's winning the national championship. Um, here's the two biggest takeaways from what I think about Tennessee though through four games and then obviously playing against Oklahoma. That Oklahoma team has a very good defense, like you alluded to, and. The biggest thing is that I felt like the whole game watching this, that Hypel and especially Nico, they were just even keeled. Because in a, in a moment like that on the road, an emotional environment for your head coach, you could press. You, you could try to make the big play. You know, Oklahoma did a good job of limiting Nico in terms of what they mm-hmm. do. But I also think Tennessee kind of just felt like, we don't have to. We don't have to go put up fifty-five to win this game. Yeah. And 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 I, I'm impressed with the fact that they didn't try to push the envelope too far and lose a game because that's how teams like, you know, with a young quarterback like that would lose a game. You try to do too much. Um, I think Nico's right. probably the most God-given talented, best, best God-given talented quarterback in the country in terms of raw pure talent. He's probably the best one. I'm not saying that he, you know, he's better in cars or all of these kind of things. I don't know. That we'll have to see what that looks like. I just think in terms of the skill set that he brings to the table, he might be the most pure talented quarterback in the country. The second part to this, Will, it has evaded Josh Heupel his entire time at Tennessee. They've had it in spurts, but in the big moments, it's been the defense that has just been absent from a Josh Heupel-led Tennessee team. I am really intrigued with the fact that obviously, you know, everyone talked about they might have the number one pick in the preseason. I think we've cooled down on that um, conversation. I think yeah. just in terms of what positional needs might be, but that kid, you know, they've, they've got some dudes. This defense for Tennessee, that's what puts them into a national title contender type of picture um, because this is, a, this is a really complete team that plays – very balanced football, and they play off of each other very, very well. Yeah. I think that that's something we've seen. They took NC State to the woodshed, which I don't know if NC State's really as bad as we think they are. I don't know <laughs> what they are. We're going to talk about that later. But then, I don't know. I'm impressed. Those are the two key thing takeaways. Nico is wiser beyond his years, and that this defense, that this team plays very good complementary football, which we couldn't really say about Tennessee in the big moments in previous seasons. Yeah, and and to me, the biggest thing about them is they know they know who they are, and they seem yeah. to have known who they are since the opening kickoff of the season, which is rare and surprising, and that's what really makes them scary. Uh, you talk about that defense; we saw them really turn the corner last year. Think back to that Texas A and M game; they shut them down. That was similar score line to this one for most of that game, if not the whole game. They run the ball, which nobody really expected from from Josh Heupel when he came in, and you know his first season with Hendon Hooker. Um, they're scary. They're scary, yeah. and and you know where they do it, and and Sam's gonna love this, and he's heard me say it a, a million times. They win the line of scrimmage. They yeah. win the line of scrimmage. They've got in in my personal opinion, only from what I've seen, the best defensive line coach in the country uh, and maybe of the last 10, 15 years and Rodney Garner. Everywhere that dude goes, he has a nasty defensive line that wins every single snap and and is two, three deep at every position. It, it starts up front. And, and Tennessee, they're, they're not a finesse team like a lot of people thought Josh Heupel would bring in. They have been tough on both sides of the ball. They don't back down. They showed it in this game. And they just do what they have to do to win. And they're yeah, they're really good at all phases. And and I think 
as we see more and more this year, they're going to lean on that running game. They've got a great quarterback in Nico, but they're not, I don't think they're as talented at wide receiver as they were last year. Um, so, so they'll have to lean on the run more, but they do a really, really good job with it. And, and, and they're not going anywhere. They're, they're going to stay in the top 10 maybe the rest of the season. Uh, and obviously for people that maybe didn't tune in for some reason, you see the score 25-15, you're probably like, well, what in the world are you talk guys talking about? This was not a th- – this is the biggest 10-point blowout I've ever seen in my life uh, because this game was not close um, in terms – it never felt like Tennessee was really going to lose it. And this is a good comment too. Sam says Tennessee won this game in the first half. Heifel was impressive in his game plan after going to second and third string tackles. We talked about that last week. Lance Hurd not available. Um, on both ends of the O-line, they decided to run the ball and just use the clock. They did. And, Sam, I think that speaks to, in kind of your second comment, or your, your last comment down there, um, you know, oh, my bad, Will, you throw it up there, is, you know, Heifel's won two games where his offense has scored less than 30 points. and him last year, Oklahoma this year, he's evolving as a coach in front of our eyes. I know that we did earlier in the year, Ralph, or Will, me, you, and Ralph did kind of these top ten coaches. I don't remember if any of us had Heupel in that top ten. I don't think we did. Um, I think he's a top ten coach in college football. Yes, <laughs> uh, through four weeks, and and that might be maybe mm-hmm. maybe someone comes back and you know it's going to be hilarious. Let's say Tennessee gets blown out by Georgia or somebody like that, and well, y'all are morons. I mean, well, there's a lot of teams that are getting blown out by Georgia, so it's it is what it is. <laughs> um, but I, I think I think he is, and I think it's time. Also, I want to finish with this, and I want to get your thoughts on this. Am I crazy for thinking that it's time to really start thinking about? We've, we've put two offensive play callers on this pedestal for the past five years, Lane Kiffin and Lincoln Riley. They've, they've, they've done a great job. Is it time that we add Josh Heupel to that? I, I understand that he's maybe younger in his head coaching tenure, but in terms of like what Sam is saying, Saturday just showed me. It's not we got to go, for lack of better words, balls to the wall for 60 minutes and just go run down somebody's throat. No, like we can – play our style game and we can ease we can ease on and off the gas pedal and still mm-hmm. beat teams that might be in my opinion the most impressive thing so am i crazy it cannot can i put them up there or is it too soon absolutely and, and you know for me it goes back to like i just said he that team knows what they are yeah they know they know what they're good at they know what they do well and and he does a better job than anybody at least the, through the first four games of the season and putting that offense in position to uh, plays to their strengths he plays to their strengths and you know that that's what that's that's what makes a great play caller 